All right, guys, today we are going to fix a card from eBay, Vega 56. Uh, this is an XFX that was marked for parts or not working. And the card works fine. Uh, unfortunately, the light on top that uh, glows radion is not working. So I open the card up, as you can see, I've already cleaned most of the thermal paste off of the heat sink and the chip. And I found out that the header for the light was broken. This should be a pretty f simple fix, uh, especially what I picked the card up for. But uh, we're gonna need a solder and iron and obviously we're going to need to apply a new thermal paste. I use um, Conductinot, which is uh, basically a liquid metal. It's one of the best that I've seen on the market. So let's go ahead and get started. Fix this card. So there's going to be, um, hopefully that'll focus, there's going to be two posts, there we go, two posts, and then on the side there, we've got uh, two more that'll need to be re-soldered to the board. Does not want to focus being that close to the camera. Alright, so the first thing we need is a little bit of solder and uh, a hot solder and iron. Alright guys, so we are done with the soldering. We're going to go ahead and apply the uh, thermal paste or uh, conduct a knot, thermal grizzly. Like I said, it's a liquid, liquid metal compound. Uh, I think it's going to drop the temps quite a bit, but we'll see. We'll do some before and after. So it's really important that you clean uh, both sides uh, on the heat sink itself and um, the processor, and in this case, all these other uh, chips, uh, transistors. Um, Anywhere that they make contact with the heat sink or in the Vega 56's case, um, there's several different locations all in here that they make uh, contact with the case itself. Uh, and we want to make sure that uh, we apply uh, an ample amount, but definitely not make a mess with this stuff. It is conductive, and we don't want it um, uh, bleeding over into um, any of the other... Um, components. You really want to make sure this stuff is clean. Uh, you can use the uh, supplied uh, pad that comes with it uh, or I like to use uh, isopropyl uh, rubbing alcohol with a rag and a little bit of elbow grease. You got to be real careful though because this is a circuit board. Uh, you don't want to damage anything. Uh, but you got to make sure it's really, really clean and all traces of the old uh, thermal paste have been taken off. All right, we're going to give it one final wipe down. It's going to be real gentle. Most of the uh, big stuff is off. Just make sure it's really, really clean for the new uh, compound. I've already cleaned these before, but again, just being over cautious here, making sure every last drop of grease from my fingers, oil from my fingers, or anything else is off before I get started. Take the Q-tip and start moving it around. You're going to have to add some, but as you can see, pretty nice layer here. A 
you're going to make sure you get it on all three uh, parts of the CPU die or the GPU die. And again, we're going to do each one of these and then we're going to put the card back together. We're going to get, to get out to the very edge. Again, got to be real careful not to get any excess off onto the GPU chip. All right, so once you're done, should look like this. It'll be kind of hard to see because of the reflection. Looks like you've laid tin foil on top of it or uh, hot liquid solder. Pretty neat stuff. And then you're going to, on the top of the heat sink, apply a thin amount as well. All right, and then you're going to stick it back together and screw it down and then we'll test the GPU out after we put it back together. Alright guys, so there's our card that we just finished. This is a 6 card Vega 56 and 64 rig. We're going to go ahead and uh, hook this guy up and uh, test the temps. As you can see, the set point on these six cards is 60 degrees, and they're going to run around 60 degrees, but one good indication is the uh, fan RPM to keep them at that temperature. So you can see anywhere from 2,000 up to 2,900 RPM. So let's go ahead and hook the other card up and uh, check it out. So... Good sign, looks like we fixed the light. And we're going to wait till Windows gets done loading the drivers and we're going to apply the power play table, the uh, other overclock settings, and then I'll come right back. Alright guys, so all seven of them are running. I'm letting them... Um, Heat saturate real good so we can get a decent test. Uh, but like I said, for parts are not working. Uh, and there you go. Uh, it looked like last time I looked at it, it was 1936 hash. So not bad for a not working card. Just a little bit of solder, a little bit of time, and we've got a perfectly good card for a really good price. I'm going to let them heat soak a little bit. And then we'll look at the temps on the screens. Uh, I'll be right back. Hey right, guys, so it's been running for, um, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. I'd say they're pretty well, you know, up to their set point. If you can look, they've all reached set point, and that's kind of, kind of what you would expect to see. But if you can see right there, GPU 6... Uh, GPU 6 is only 1971 RPM and there's another card there it is GPU 4 which I did the same process to didn't have to fix it uh, but the same process as far as the thermal compound although they're gonna run it whatever your set point is you can see the difference uh, in fan speed it's uh, considerably different So the fan is not having to work as hard to keep the GPU cool or at the set point. 